Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam and I have been living with multiple sclerosis for nearly 37 years. And though I'm not a medical professional of any kind, I am a professional when it comes to living every day with multiple sclerosis. And over the years I've discovered a thing or two and I just wanted to share some of the things that I've learned and the things that I think about. Well, today I wanted to talk a little bit about one of those chicken and egg things. And for MS, there's definitely a chicken and egg thing when it comes to two different terms that we hear quite a bit, depression and fatigue. And I have been looking a little bit at literature and finding articles about depression and MS, articles about fatigue and MS, but it's really hard to kind of tease out where depression and fatigue overlap, if you will, or how they're really distinctive. And I find myself wondering if when we feel lethargic, less than motivated, are we depressed or are we fatigued? In other words, Well, one thing that I did find was an article from the National MS Society, and I've got the link there, and I'll also include that in the description box below. But it describes the symptoms of what they call clinical depression. And I'm very familiar with this list, and you may be too, because there was a time there when every time you went to the doctor's office, they were giving you this list of symptoms to find out if you were depressed. But I went through this list to see whether there was much overlap with what you would call fatigue, right? The kinds of things you experience when you're fatigued. And so let's go on through here. I highlighted in yellow all the things that I thought could just as easily describe fatigue. So shall we go through this? We'll see what we get. First one is sadness and or irritability. Well, I do think so. I think even without MS, if you're tired, you could be irritable, right? <laughs> we all know that. People come home from work grouchy because they're tired. So uh, yeah, definitely with MS fatigue, you're going to get that. And sadness, that's a tough one because I'm not really sure how you actually quantify that. But anyway, I highlighted that. I thought that went just as well with fatigue as depression. Here's another one that they say is part of clinical depression. Loss of interest or pleasure in everyday activities. Okay, well, once again, if you're fatigued, you, you lose your interest in doing pretty much anything, right? So I don't know. Are you depressed or are you fatigued? I highlighted that one in yellow as well. And you'll be seeing a pattern here because this one is also in yellow. Loss of appetite or increase in appetite. And I think for me with fatigue, I'm, yeah, part of being too um, unmotivated, shall we say, to care is that if I eat, fine, and if I don't, that's fine too. I guess not really that excited about meals or meal prep or even sitting down to some kind of nice meal that somebody else prepared for me. So. I highlighted that one as well. And I highlighted this next one, sleep disturbances, either insomnia or excessive sleeping. Okay, I think that you could probably chime in on this one. You've had that experience. You're so fatigued, you can't really get good sleep, right? You may, you may be in bed a lot, but are you actually sleeping? That's another thing. And if you are sleeping, are you getting good sleep? Fatigue does tend to rob our bodies of rest, which is really kind of bizarre because when you're fatigued, it's almost like you're, t you're just, I don't know, your bones ache. I, that was kind of my thing. It's awfully hard to get comfortable and get good sleep. So the next one, once again, highlighted in yellow, agitation or slowing in behavior. Now, <laughs> I don't know about agitation, but does that go along with irritability? Maybe. 
But slowing in behavior, sure. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer, right? When you're fatigued, your behavior slows down. You're not really doing things as quickly as you might normally be doing them. You're probably being more methodical. It takes more effort. So yes, but then again, is this depression or is this fatigue? <laughs> well, that's a no-brainer, right? Yeah, fatigue is associated with depression. They have it right here for you, just in case you didn't already have that figured out. And the next one is problems with thinking or concentration. Well, again, when I'm fatigued, I don't really concentrate very well. Sometimes when I'm fatigued, I don't even like to read because I don't connect ideas from paragraph to paragraph. I can't really engage with the text like I like to. So. Again, I'm highlighting that in yellow because it could be depression, but it could just as well be fatigue. And then finally, we come to two other ones that I did not highlight in yellow. These are the two warning signs, and that's why I put them in red. They are definitely signs that you need to seek help and as soon as possible. If you are feeling persistently that you have no worth, if you're feeling guilty about things, and also if you have persistent thoughts about death or killing yourself, please get some help. This is not fatigue. This is clinical depression. Hands down, please do get some help for that. And I'm not sure that I've resolved anything in my own mind except that it is difficult to tease out. The difference between fatigue and depression, isn't it? So it's just complicated, <laughs> as is almost everything to do with multiple sclerosis. So I'm th just thinking more about this. Maybe multiple sclerosis is, is kind of like a magnifying glass for both depression and fatigue. A magnifying glass, I'm thinking of, you know, the old thing about, and I never did this, I, I have to be honest, I've never done this, but I heard that it was done by kids, they would take those magnifying glasses and kind of train the beam on the fly in the windowsill and <laughs> set them on fire. MS could be like that, it can magnify symptoms of either depression or fatigue and or both at the same time because just because you discover that your symptoms are really more fatigue that doesn't mean you're not dealing with some depression and the same is true of the reverse and you know I feel like I'm talking in circles tonight but it, maybe that's because that's kind of how this is it is kind of circular fatigue depression depression fatigue the depression of fatigue that's fatigue of depression yeah. yeah okay so magnifying glass is one analogy and maybe for the more modern life people don't see magnifying glasses as often anymore but laser pointers maybe is a good analogy for it that it tends to focus things like a laser whereas maybe if your your uh, depression or whatever would have been so mild that you wouldn't have really made a note of it but the fatigue just makes the depression seem worse i wanted to share what happened to me some years back we had just moved from one side of the country to the other and in doing so we left behind the friends and the life that i had made over 25 years and we moved to the side of the country where all of our relatives were, our families, both my husband's and mine. We were going to come back and we were going to become more involved in our families' lives again. But the trouble was we didn't end up living very close to our families because they lived in parts of the country where it was just too expensive, we couldn't afford it. So we were, I don't know, two and a half hours from my mom and about four hours from my sister. So we didn't really see them on a regular basis. We had to build a life all over again, pretty much from scratch, because we didn't really know anybody. 
And I found myself, not too long after we moved there and got settled in, I found myself being what I would have called at that time very, very fatigued and I had never been this fatigued before. I spent pretty much 22 out of 24 hours of each day in bed. Even though I wasn't sleeping, I just didn't have any energy and I would describe it as so bad that if you had walked up to me with a loaded gun and said either you get out of bed or I'm going to shoot you, I would have said go ahead, pull the trigger. I just didn't have any interest in getting out of bed and doing anything. It was it was really kind of strange. It went on for months. Um, I don't even know exactly how many months, but I'm going to guess at least six. I know that sounds crazy, right? I, I had also left behind all my all my medical team and anyone else that would have taken me to task because they knew how I normally was. They would have said, there's something wrong. You need to see somebody. But there wasn't anyone. And then when I finally was over, it was, it was over. And then I just went back to life again. And that was that. But as I look back on it now, that was probably a blending of both fatigue and depression, right? I was depressed. It would make sense. I had left behind my friends my church, my, what had been my job up until fairly recently, and I didn't really have anything much to replace it with because I was just in a town I didn't know anybody. It took a while to build back some kind of a life, and actually what was the lifeline for me was a church that we started going to and also the MS support group that I started going to. And that, both of those just kind of got me more integrated with people again, and then I pulled out of it. And things got back to some kind of a footing where I could feel like, all right, I'm kind of myself again. And so, yeah, that was fatigue, but it was also depression. Now that I look at it, I would say it was a blend of both. And so what I guess I'm trying to get at is that it is complicated to tease out the distinction between depression and fatigue, but we're not the professionals. Maybe we aren't the ones who should be trying to diagnose that. But if you're not feeling like your normal self and with MS, obviously that's kind of a, <laughs> that's kind of a strange thing to even say, because what's normal, but if you're seeing this trend that goes on for some period of time that's just really unusual for you, talk to somebody about it and see somebody, get some help on that because something's not right. You can, whether it's fatigue or depression, something's not right and you need to get somebody to pay attention and help you through it. So that's it. Not very profound, I know. And I'm making this at night, or in the evening anyway, instead of my usual in the morning. So I'm not even as coherent as I, <laughs> I like to pride myself on being. It's just something I've been thinking about, and as I said, I've been trying to research it. Haven't really found good information about that intersection between depression and fatigue. And I will keep looking. If I find anything else, I'll put it in the description box down below. But if you have any experience that you wanted to share about that, or if you have any thoughts on fatigue and depression, I'd really love for you to let me know. Let us all know. So go and get back to your regular life, and I will see you again in my next video.